Let's kick off this video with your recommendations, starting with Stash Merkin and Destroy All Humans. This game was one of my favorites growing up. As an alien invader called Crypto, we have to take over the world in various missions. And this game gets a high score for attitude and humor. For a PS2 game it still looks fantastic and it has the no Fs given charm to it. So I highly recommend you give it a try. The next recommendation comes from Moose Lord with Seek and Destroy, a very good but silly tank based RPG. I did check out this PS2 game after your recommendation and I have to say, it is literally a blast to play. As a tank driver we have to smoke other war machines on the battlefield and level whole cities while doing so. I'm in mission 2 now and this is a ton of fun to play. And with that said, hey you guys, how are you doing? When I scroll through my PlayStation 2 library searching for a game to play, there is a certain vibe that this era of gaming gives off. And discovering an edgy PS2 game that I've missed is one of my favorite pastimes. So today we are checking out 10 PlayStation 2 games that go hard. And you guys know the drill. Grab yourself some pizza, kick back and make yourself comfortable and let's get the kick out of gaming. Let's kick off this list with a game that has a bad rap but is a ton of fun to play, Shadow the Hedgehog. This is my favorite Sonic game and it screams 2000 hardcore edge from every pixel on the screen. From the first frames of the intro, the tone is set. A fully loaded mech pumping his assault rifle, I don't think that's how this works Shadow, and ready to smoke some goons, we are let loose and dropped straight into a war zone. And the game's story reflects this. Shadow is a dark and brooding hedgehog who is haunted by his past and has to deal with an alien invasion all while having to deal with an existential crisis. But he takes it like a man, with violence, guns and a ton of swearing. Let's just say the story goes wild. Shadow the Hedgehog features a branching storyline that allows us to choose whether to be a good guy or a bad guy. This means we can run around shooting aliens or we can try to save the world from destruction. It's up to us. And this is one of the coolest features which adds a lot of replayability. There is a whole flowchart between levels, leading to 10 different endings and only after completing all of them we can unlock the game's true ending. Not sure how this game fits into the overall storyline of Sonic games, but it's like playing a wild fever dream anyway. In hindsight, I think Shadow mainly got a bad rap because it added weapons to the gameplay mix and it didn't fit too well with the main Sonic series. But back then, my 15 year old self did absolutely love it. In the world of video games, there are just a few titles that have achieved legendary status for their sheer audacity and outlandishness and Shadow the Hedgehog is definitely one of those games. It did punch above its weight class and tried way too hard, but I think this is what makes it so much fun to play. Overall, it's a solid and entertaining game that is still a blast to play. So make sure you give this hilarious spin-off game a try. And with that said, we are checking out the next PlayStation 2 Edge Fest that will literally blow your mind. Drake and God. If I had to describe what the whole PS2 era felt like in one game, Drake and God would be a perfect fit. So buckle up, because this game is about to take you on a wild and weird journey through a fantastic world of dragons, dark cults and mind-boggling storytelling. We play as Kain, a brooding warrior who after fatally wounded in battle decides to make a pact with a freaking dragon to keep on fighting. What a freaking legend! The story really has this dark and gritty feel to it and it goes bonkers in the later levels. Just make sure you go in as blind as possible. Drakengard 1 had one of the best yet darkest stories I've seen in a non-horror video game. The lore really goes into uncomfortable depths and even rivals classics like Berserk. And it had some of the same flaws as the Berserk games too. 
mainly clunky controls. Speaking of dragons, get ready to take off and engage in aerial combat on the back of your own fire-breeding beast because you can switch seamlessly between ground combat and arcade-style air battles. As mentioned before, the controls are as untamed as the dragons themselves. But amidst the chaos, there is a certain charm to Draken God. This game doesn't shy away from being weird and unconventional. It's a game that embraces its unique brand of madness. In conclusion, Breaking Guard is a wild and unpredictable adventure that will keep you entertained. So grab your sword, mount your dragon and prepare for a journey that's as bizarre as it is entertaining. Next up, we have a 2D game series that did jump into the 3D world, Metal Slug 3D. Like every PlayStation 2 video before this, I had to include a Japanese exclusive PS2 title. This time with an official English translation. The funny thing is that Metal Suck 3D has English voice acting and most of the menus are in English too. I had absolutely no problems playing this game with zero Japanese skills, so I have no clue why this game was never ported to the West. With that out of the way, this 3D Metal Slug game is a blast to play. We have to fight the evil army General Morden's alliance with an evil corporation, so basically we are taking on the whole military industrial complex. And to be honest, Metal Slug 3D has a surprising amount of cutscenes and story segments. Every character has a unique personality, something I didn't expect from a Metal Slug game. Good thing is the gameplay managed to stay as fun as the 2D original. We are still blasting goons around the world, from calm European towns to Arabian villages to the pyramids and some ice stages. I feel like the jump from 2D to 3D was done pretty well. It kept the Metal Slug charm. And here is a heads up. At first I had some challenges with the basic controls because I had no clue how to aim. But a quick google search for Metal Slug 3D controls revealed that R1 is a lock on button which helped a ton with aiming. And once I got a hang for the gameplay it felt super smooth and fun. It was an absolute blast to play. Metal Slug 3D managed to capture the look and feel of the 2D titles perfectly and it emulates the same chaotic action that made the original games so much fun. In a short time it became one of my favorite guilty pleasure games of recent history. And talking about a recent revival, I decided to give the ultimate law enforcement machine a try on PlayStation 2, Robocop. As the coolest metal cop, we are tasked with finding the goons responsible for the spread of a new designer drug known as Brain Drain. And we are solving this case with one simple but effective strategy, taking down every criminal element of New Detroit by blasting our way through bullet fodder gang members. Get ready for a mix of shooting and um, not much else. The gameplay loop is pretty straightforward. The world's worst henchmen did line up to be goons in this game. Criminals will often just run straight towards you, ignoring any sense of self-preservation. So your robotic trigger finger is put to good use in 9 different levels and don't go into Robocop expecting some underrated world-class shooter, it's a guilty pleasure game at best. Blasting low-life goons in small levels going from point A to point B. If you like me and can have some fun with games like Rogue Warrior, then this gem is for you. If you see it in the bargain bin, give it a shot like you would give a low-life goon in the futuristic streets of Detroit. And if you want to level up your experience a bit, pop in a couple of cheat codes I found online. Like unlimited energy or bullets, because then you really become Robocop walking around wasting bad guys left and right. In conclusion, Robocop on PlayStation 2 is a game that is a simple shooter for a few hours of fun with some robotic charm. The next game on this list did use its license a bit more effective and made something truly unique with it. Snoopy vs the Red Baron. This dogfighting adventure takes dogfighting quite literally. Where the world's most lovable beagle will take off to the skies to combat the infamous Red Baron. Snoopy might be a lovable pup, but don't let that fool you. Once he's in his old school biplane, he becomes the ultimate flying ace who embarks on a daring mission to take down the Red Baron 
Mantis Quadrant. This gives the children cartoon a bit of an edge with some cartoony battles. The gameplay is the main highlight here. Maneuvering our plane is a breeze and the dogfights are filled with over-the-top aerial acrobatics. You will find yourself dodging enemy fire, dropping oversized bombs on unsuspecting goons and even engaging in mid-air trickery that would make even the most seasoned ace combat pilot proud. For a PS2 game, the graphics are colorful and cartoony which made them age like fine wine. It's a game that never takes itself too seriously and it reminds you that even in the midst of aerial combat, there is always room for some comical misshapes. Snoopy vs. the Red Baron is a surprisingly great dogfighting adventure filled with an amazing gameplay loop that will surprise you like a bullet from a professional sharpshooter. And with that smooth transition, we hit the next spot on this list. Silent Scope Silent Scope is an arcade game classic that puts us in the shoes of a sniper during a series of terrorist incidents. The president and his family have been kidnapped by lethal terrorists and the government turns up at our doorstep for help. As an elite counter-terrorist sniper, we have to neutralize the hostile threats. Our mission is to infiltrate different levels clear all areas of danger and return the president's family safely to the White House. Graphically, the game is arcade perfect right down to the splattering blood and polygonal explosions. But this reveals one of its biggest flaws too. Like every arcade game, it's a bit short. It's really fun while it lasts, naturally, but a couple of hours of gameplay is all there is. The Silent Scope series is an excellent game in the arcades and the fun factor alone is crowned with one of the most original controllers I have ever seen. Sadly, there is no light gun support for this gem on the PlayStation 2. Good thing is it managed to find a way to work around it. When we press the circle button, we zoom in and the display moves more slowly so we can precisely position our shots. When we depress it, you can zoom around and broadly center on our target. Using those two in tandem quickly develops into a fine art. And unlike some other games we could mention, repeating this action of picking off bad guys over and over again does not lose its charm. In conclusion, Silent Scope is a fun arcade style light gun shooter without a light gun, but with a great sniping gameplay loop. And if you find it on a budget price, give it a try. Shooting goons is a blast, but you know what triggers me hot? When my viewers kick the freaking like button. So thank you for that. And with that said, it's time to dive into the urban underground world of Mark Echoes Getting Up, Contents Under Pressure. In this game, we play as Train, a graffiti spraying legend. This guy takes his art seriously. So seriously that he jumps, climbs and backflips around the city to get to the best places to tag the highest walls. The only problem here is this city is ruled by a police force tasked with stopping taggers by any means necessary. Soon we get in over our head with rival gangs, the police and even the mayor himself and must fight in order to survive. The events get to some truly insane places and everything is so bombastically serious that I couldn't help but love it. There is a certain charm to the whole story that made me respect it in a way I wasn't expecting. On top of that, the gameplay has a nice mix of exploring levels, fighting, doing a bit of stealth and of course tagging, which is the highlight of getting up. The graffiti system is a clever and well implemented style of minigame that I couldn't get enough of. We are starting out with just small pieces, but in the later levels we can paint some really impressive pieces. As we climb pipes and latches to reach various predetermined spots to bomb with our work. However, like most ambitious early 3D PS2 games, the controls are a bit imprecise. And a few times I had trouble determining where to go and had to check a guide. But overall, Mark Echo's Getting Up, Contents Under Pressure is a freaking unique game. Unlike many other high profile games I have seen, it felt like someone's unique vision. This game was absolutely incredible to play growing up. And I'm really glad I did experience it in my early gaming years. The next game is a bit shallower, but has some other positive aspects. Blood Ride. 
In this bloody action adventure, we are embarking on a journey into the dark and hilarious world of Blood Rhine, where we play as Rhine, a half-human, half-vampire chick, who is out on a mission to hunt down a supernatural unit of the Axis of Evil. Blood Rhine has a very unique, dark and gritty atmosphere set in supernatural World War II, with some bloody good one-liners and the good old early 2000s edge to it. The evil goons could be straight out of a B-horror movie trying to outdo each other in the overacting department. Enough of your insults. I will prove Aryan superiority to you. Ever heard of overcompensation? Good thing is we have a good variety of weapons at our disposal. From blades to heavy machine guns, we are crafting a freaking cocktail of destruction that's both stylish and satisfying at the same time. And here is a tip, you shouldn't leave any children near this game because the violence is cranked up to 11. The levels themselves feel like a tour through a haunted amusement park, from a creepy castle to eerie bunkers full of crazy World War II experiments. It's like Ryan signed up for the ultimate goth vacation package. In conclusion, if you're looking for a game that blends hot vampire chicks with non-stop action, Blood Rhine is the one. And while we're at the topic of overly violent, edgy action flicks, let's check out The Punisher. I have to admit, I wholeheartedly relate to angry dudes with nothing to lose. And The Punisher on PlayStation 2 makes my dreams come true. We play as the fearless vigilante himself, Frank Castle. This dude has taken a masterclass in stoic facial expression because I swear his face is stuck on the I just ran out of pizza. Whether he's disarming bombs or taking on a room full of goons with just a knife. And when I'm making these videos, there is always this one game that I can't stop playing when capturing footage. And for this video, it was The Punisher. The gameplay is quick, pick up and play bloody goodness. For a PS2 game, the impact when shooting still feels great and the levels have the perfect length for a quick play session. So time starts flying. Another good thing is, or a bad thing, it depends on your definition, is the enemy AI. Those foes are about as intelligent as a brick. They rush towards you like you are the last chopper out of Raccoon City. And those goons end up like most Raccoon City inhabitants too. Which leads us to a very special gameplay feature, the interrogations. Frank Castle also went to the interrogation school of Tough Love, where he learned the HO technique of smashing faces against saw blades and other deadly objects as a light detector. And this game gets really creative when it comes to finding deadly objects. So The Punisher is more than deserving of its age rating. In conclusion, The Punisher on PlayStation 2 is an old school action game by the books with tons of unneeded but most welcome violence. So let's dish out some freaking justice before we talk about the final game on this list. Yakuza. The first, the real, the OG in one of my favorite gaming series of all time. And I gotta be honest guys, I think I will never grow tired of talking about the Yakuza games. I feel like these games are tailor made for me. A dark and gritty soap opera with funny sub stories mixed with beat em up brawler gameplay and a bit of open world madness too. Right from the get go, we get introduced to the low poly legend himself, Kazuma Kiryu who early on in this story ends up sentenced to 10 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Upon being released from police custody, he finds things have changed, friends have turned into enemies and the Yakuza family he once was part of has now cast him out. Very quickly we get sucked into the middle of a conspiracy involving the entire Yakuza clan. The first Yakuza game on PlayStation 2 is the only game in the series that received a full English dub, featuring a lot of very big name actors such as Michael Madsen or Mark Hamill, which all try to one-up each other by pushing the swear word counter to the max. Let's just say they are going the extra mile with the 2000s edge. And that leads to a lot of heated discussions with our fists. Faces get stamped on, guts get kicked, and that's before we bring into the equation the many weapons and heat finishers. While a bit simple, the fighting system is really solid. I still remember finding this PS2 gem in my local video game rental store and grabbing it for the weekend. 
Once booted up, I couldn't stop playing. At the time, I had never seen a game like this before. Every once in a while around Christmas, I return to the small open world, and it's always a blast. Hitting the arcades, go for a bit of gambling, or finishing some side missions. There is a ton of stuff to do here. And that's the whole charm of the Yakuza games. Sega did manage to get it right from the first game on, so I highly recommend you give it a try on your PlayStation 2. And that's it my dudes, these are 10 of my favorite PlayStation 2 hidden gems. Let me know in the comments down below which edgy PS2 title did I miss? Which is your favorite PlayStation 2 game that goes hard? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, kick the like button, sharing is caring and subscribe. But most importantly, have a great day and get the kick out of gaming. Shadow, what the fuck are you talking about? You're a beta male, Sonic.